scream. Hey, are you still searching scholarships in Google? That's an okay start, but it will only get you so far. Don't worry though, here are top scholarship sites we recommend and what you should look out for. Remember, many scholarship sites will collect and sell your data and information, so be cautious and mindful of what you're signing up for. All right, here's the list. Number one, JLV scholarships. There's no sign up required, it's consistently updated, and has set categories to help you find scholarships you qualify for, like age, college major, grade level, gender, interest, and more. Number two, fast webs. You do have to create an account, so be mindful of what you are agreeing to and the information you are sharing. That said, FastWeb is great at matching you with scholarships that you qualify for. Number three, scholarships.com. You will need to create an account, so again, be mindful of what you agree to. They have a massive database of scholarships and they help match you. Happy scholarship searching. If you need more help, text hello to 335577 or head to getschooled.com. Have you subscribed to our channel? yet make sure you do so right now bye that was lovely daily um sharing a quick video about scholarships that is still playing in my background i apologize um hey everybody welcome uh happy wednesday and thanks for joining us for get schooled after school uh, my name is Danielle Gunder. If you were with us last week, you will recognize me. I'm the Senior Program Manager at Get Schooled. And for those of you who don't know, Get Schooled is your free digital college and job advisor. And we created this awesome webinar series to help make applying to college and finding a job easier for you. A couple of housekeeping. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop the questions in the Q&A. Um, we are happy to answer them. We may answer them by typing. We may answer them live, but we will make sure you get them answered. And now I am super excited to kick off today's scholarship webinar by introducing our guest speaker, Linda McGee. She's a college advisor at Downtown Magnets High School in Los Angeles, and she's here to answer your questions about searching and applying for scholarships. Uh, Linda's been a counselor for 20 years and college gives her life meaning. So she spends her time working with students both at her school and other institutions. She's very passionate about helping teens find the right school and not just the ones with recognizable names. You can see more of her and her work at either her YouTube channel, which is called Talking College with Mrs. McGee, or at her website, which we will be talking about and sharing during this session. So please join me in welcoming Linda. Hello. Um, we are just gonna jump into it because this is such a big topic and there's so much to talk about in a short amount of time. So to get started, can you talk about how you help your students when looking um, for where to search for scholarships and the best way to find them? Okay, so searching for scholarships, there are two important ways that you need to look. First, there is through the colleges that you're applying to, and then there's outside of the colleges. And a lot of what I say will be California-centric, but not necessarily all of it, because most of the scholarships are national and sometimes even international, um, so it just depends. So the thing to get started with is, like she said on the video, get yourself into some databases where you can find them and they can find you. When they say match you, they ask you lots of questions about GPA, where you go to school, what grade level you're in, and then they find scholarships that suit you. Now it's not perfect. There'll be some where you're like, how did they think I could do this? Um, but it's a good start. But the number one, one, one thing that you should do is make yourself an email that is specific for your scholarship search. Just make yourself a Google, um, I mean, a Gmail, and um, use that for, now, of course, you have to check it all the time because you might be getting notices. But that way, it will keep you from getting spammed with a lot of advertising. All of these sites are free to use. However, you know you pay one way or another. And one of those ways is by having all sorts of advertisers that they think might 
suit you and, and have them contact you. And we know that because we all use the internet anyway. So um, we could start by looking, we could look at my website and I could share with some resources that I have there. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, this is the Downtown Magnets website um, and it has lots of things on it um, that you might wanna look at. Um, but the scholarship page is what we're going to focus on. So at the top of this page, uh, these are scholarship search engines. Um, and they look for certain things where, like I say, they'll try to match you to scholarships. And again, you know, you want to protect your information. Um, I did not include the one, the JLV scholarships, because that was already on the video. So you have that. Um, and I do want to talk a little bit about this one because it's different um, from the others. If you have not heard of race.me before, um, this particular website, you set up an account and it has all these college partners in it where if you decide to attend this school, they will have these scholarships added to your financial aid package. Um, they're, they're what they call micro scholarships. They're small, but they'll reward you for everything. You've taken AP classes, oh, here's $50 a class if you go to this school. This school will give you $100 a class. Pass the test, this one will give you $1,000. I mean, there's different prices for different schools. It'll introduce you to colleges you're not familiar with and maybe should be, and you can add them to your list. And not only that, it also will um, allow you to start as a ninth grader and just, you know, cause there's a lot, every, it asks about your activities and everything. So you can get rewarded for being an active student. And I definitely think that this is something you should check out. So because a lot of people aren't familiar with this site, I wanted to make sure that I pointed out how it was different. The rest of these are very similar in how they gather your information. Um, this one is an important site because this is a relationship that the dream.us has developed between certain colleges and themselves. Now it's not every college, but they have a list of every college in whatever state it is. Um, and you can go to this site and see, am I gonna be applying to any of these colleges? This is not a difficult scholarship to get. I had a student get this, she, she wasn't, she's a very uh, sincere student, but she wasn't a top GPA student at all. And she won this, it's differing amounts depending on the school that you're in. And I do wanna tell you that um, it is, I think there's more California and New York schools, but um, it's for students who are undocumented and it is uh, trying to help. If in California you have the Cal Grant, but you need a little more, or if you're in a state that does not give state funding to undocumented students. So, this site is dedicated to undocumented students, and that's great because that gives them a good starting place. You'll also see on the JLV page that was shown originally, um, there is a whole segment of undocumented student applications. And also for international students who may be here legally, but are not allowed to apply for the FAFSA um, or any of the state grant programs. This one's kind of fun because it is a scholarship for people who didn't do as well in high school, but are very motivated to go to college. So there's a lot of things here. Oh, one other one I wanna point out. This one here with a very close deadline, you see it's the 10th. Um, when you apply, your school is able to give a scholarship, not a scholarship, I'm sorry, but a certificates like honors to students from its own school for outstanding service hours. And then you go on to the larger competitions where the money is. But the good thing is as you're applying for these scholarships, they're always asking you about honors and awards. And there's one you can get, I will tell you at my own school, we, we have people, it's so hard to get people to apply. Like last year, no one did. So that means no one, whoever would have entered would have automatically gotten the school award. So I'm saying, look for this one and you might want to come back and, and press on that link. And then, so here's a bunch where we've got them sort of sorted by, by when they're due, uh, but you know, and here's some more um, 
options for the searches. That brings up an interesting question that we had got to from a student. Um, when should they start applying for scholarships? Well, it depends. Some of these particular individual ones may say for high school seniors or something like that. And you'll find scholarships for college freshmen. But there are many, many scholarships and programs, like for example, that first one I showed you, raise.me, where you can start as a freshman. And I will tell you, there are, when there are scholarships for people who are younger, usually, they involve an essay. And I cannot tell you how people will just say, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that one, because they don't want to write the essay. Write the essay. Once you collect a few essays, you'll find that you can use them over and over again. You just maybe slightly change them, and then they're good to go again. So collect that little you know, you'll, you'll see after a while, the topics will be very similar and um, definitely recycle and reuse. That is the key. So another question we've gotten from students is, okay, I am applying and I'm writing my essay. Is it hard to win scholarships? Well, again, that's one of those yes or no answers. I will tell you, most people go for the $10,000, $20,000 scholarships because, wow, they sound so attractive. Why not, right? But you have to think about psychologically, isn't that going to be the most competitive and most difficult? Of course it is because everyone's applying for that. And then here's this poor little $500 scholarship and people are like, oh, I have to write an essay of 300 words? forget it. So they're not getting applicants or they're getting a couple. They're like, okay, we have three applicants. Let's just give them each something. But I'm telling you, when you get really snobby about the size of a, of a um, scholarship, think about it. How long does it take you to fill this application out? If you've already got essays written, probably very short, but at the most, maybe, I don't know, an hour. And if you get $500, that's like having a job that pays $500 an hour. And if you get a few of those, they really add up. So just remember that usually if it's the smaller amount, there is less competition. And the local scholarships that are, are for people who live only in your area or, or they're only available to your high school, those are the easiest to get because obviously the competition is going to be less. Offering it to a high school does not, I mean, if your high school is like mine, you're not gonna have 50 people saying, oh yeah, let's fill out this scholarship application. Now they'll be like, oh, I'll do it later, 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 and then later never happens. So don't be the later person, get it done now. So we have gotten so many questions, which is awesome. And I wanna make sure that we answer all of them. There's one question that we've gotten a lot. So um, it is around the idea of how many scholarships should I apply for and is there a limit? Okay, since scholarships are not connected to each other, um, you should apply to as many as you have time to do, make it a part-time job and it will pay off. Um, in terms of how many, what's the minimum? Um, I, don't, I don't know if there is an answer to that. I would say once you get in the groove of doing it, you, you have some scholarships that you know you can, you can use like, oh, okay, it's that kind of a question. I know I wrote something before for that. The first, let's say three or four scholarships will be difficult. You won't have a database of scholarship answers to go to. You've never answered these questions before. It will take you a while. So after you've invested all that effort, get the most out of that by applying to more and finding, oh wait, that is almost exactly the same essay question. And again, the essay ones are great because people hate doing essays. So um, that means you have a bigger chance. And there are scholarships where it's just kind of like a raffle. Enter and see what happens. And you know, why not do those? People do win. And remember also, if you are a senior, that at your college, probably there is a, or the colleges you're applying to, there's probably a scholarship page 
that has separate scholarships from the ones that are automatically given as a part of your financial aid package. So you wanna look there too. I'll give you an example, a real one. Uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Everyone knows about their uh, FAFSA and I turn it in and the school will give me a package based on what I qualify for. But what they don't realize is that Dominguez Hills, like just about every other college, has a scholarship page of ones that you can apply for, department scholarships or what they call their presidential scholarships if you really have a high GPA. And they told me that they have a very, very low application for that, like for incoming students. They don't seem to know it's there. And every time I've had students seriously apply for those, they've won because no one's applying. So be sure to look for that as well. It's kind of like a hidden source and it would be right on the website of the colleges you're applying to. But I will tell you that's something for seniors uh, applicants to do. It's not something you can do early. So you um, led me perfectly into another question because there is a difference in scholarships, right? We have these scholarships we can apply for through private organizations, but there are institutional scholarships as well. So we have a student that asks, do I need to complete my FAFSA before applying for scholarships? Well, the answer would be no. Of course, if you can start in ninth grade with scholarships, because the FAFSA is only done by seniors who are getting ready to enter school and then as they continue through school because it has to be based on current information. So yeah, start the scholarships anytime you want. Now, if you are a California student, you might wonder about how do I, when do I do the FAFSA? Like now, it opened October 1st, it's gonna continue to be open, but there are certain schools that set a deadline. There are some schools who say by December 1st, we need your FAFSA if you want your financial aid on time. And then there's also the Cal Grant. For the Cal Grant, if you're in a California public school, that is a wonderful free money scholarship if you qualify for it that you don't even have to fill out an application for. Your high school, has uploaded something called a GPA verification form while well, they're doing it electronically. And as soon as your FAFSA is done, it connects you. So um, just know that you should be getting something from the Cal Grant office once you've filed your FAFSA and it's been a couple weeks and it matches you up. And there is a deadline for that, which is March 2nd. Now there is uh, state scholarships in every state in the union. I know in Florida, for example, you've got to do the FAFSA immediately or the state money runs out. And since I know we have a person here from Florida, um, you should have done it yesterday. So do that right now if you haven't done it yet. And it is separate from these private scholarship entities. Might not be separate from the ones given by the school though. Probably not because they want to give their merit awards after the need-based awards, which are based on your income, which is what the FAFSA gives you. So they put that all together and they call it a financial aid package. And that's what you get usually around uh, March or if you're lucky, a school's got their stuff together and you get it much earlier. So that's a great reminder that the FAFSA is open and um, it is super important to fill it out as soon as possible. Um, we have a great question about um, the difference between uh, need-based and merit scholarships. Um, so are most scholar scholarships both merit and need-based? Do I have to have a good GPA? Well, that totally depends on who's giving it. Um, the private scholarships, I have seen only merit they don't even look at your uh, financial background. Um, an example that some people may not know if you've ever heard of the Posse Scholarship, it is not a need-based scholarship. It is a um, merit-based, which means they look at leadership, GPA, other things outside of your um, financial background with your parents. And that could be helpful if your parents make uh, enough money that the FAFSA feels that they have this much available and your parents are like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that. So you're looking for those merit-based scholarships. So 
need-based means we're looking at your family income, we're figuring out what they can afford to pay, which the family doesn't always agree with. Um, and then this college, if they can meet that need, they will. They will try to meet it. But a lot of times colleges can't meet everything or they're meeting it with a lot of loan that might scare you like, yikes. Uh, I don't believe loans are bad things, but you need to limit them. And the uh, federal uh, required, the, the maximum for federal government is 5,500 for freshmen. So you don't get in too much debt. And if you're being offered more than that, then that's when you really need to look for outside scholarships. So the need-based ones aren't looking at GPA unless it's one that looks at both like the Cal grant. Um, and the merit-based, if it's only merit, is only looking at the outside things, not your family income. And then again, there's that large pool uh, that look at both. That was a lot of information, I know, um, but it was so great. And for everyone on this call, um, there are also scholarships where you don't have to be the 4.0 uh, class president, captain of the soccer team. Uh, I actually got $1,000 a year because my grandparents were born in Italy. That was the only thing I applied through uh, an organization and they nothing about GPA was asked and uh, it was a great option to help me offset some costs. Right, and these uh, searches, they're not gonna be sending you scholarships where you have to have like a 4.0. If you told them I have a 2.5, um, and there are many scholarships. Unfortunately, some, there's one that I would have pointed you to that um, has yeah, just passed. Um, although a lot of these things, remember when you go to college, you don't have to stop looking for scholarships. You can continue. It's not something that only happens, you know, when you're a high school senior. So I do want to let you know to continue looking for scholarships. Start now. I don't know what grade you are, but start now because that works for everyone and know that these will help guide you. And I did like, for example, this one here, this is specifically, you know, they don't want a high scholarship. And there, there are others too, where they will say, must have a, a 2.5, must have a 2.0, must have a 3.0. It depends the, the, the scholarship entities get to set their own sites. But I will tell you, please don't forget this grades, equal dollars. So anything that you can do to help raise your GPA will always okay. pay yeah. off in the end um, with scholarships. Yeah. Please remember that. Um, it's um, very um, important because if you are not a senior, you have time to make changes in your overall GPA. And I really do want you to, you know, to be able to get whatever you can. That's that. Um, so we were talking about loans earlier, and we uh, obviously are talking a lot about scholarships, but we have a question who is wondering, what is the difference in the process between a scholarship and a grant? Okay, um, well, a grant is, uh, and scholarships both mean free money. So that's the one thing you do need to remember. They will not need to be paid back. A loan, is a loan. It means at some point, unless you qualify for a loan forgiveness program, and there, that's something that you can look into with your college, they'll help you understand that. But do know that a loan means payback. But scholarships and grants, um, a lot of people use them interchangeably. And I think it kind of depends on what you're talking about. But they both do equal free money. Some are the kinds that are renewable, which means every year, perhaps if you keep a certain GPA, it will be renewed, like the Cal Grant. Um, others, like some of the scholarships on these sites, they are one time. You get it once and, and then it's over. So you have to look for more. Um, the best of scholarships, of course, are the ones that renew every year, but that's a huge commitment for what are often nonprofit organizations and they just don't have that much money. That's a great reminder um, because we did have a question about our scholarships for four years. So as you've heard, some things are, make sure you read information about what the 
the scholarship or grant offers, but others are a one-time payment. Uh, speaking of the Cal Grant, which is such a great opportunity that the Cal California students have, um, and it's just so easy to take advantage of, we have a question who's wondering, we have a question, sorry, we have a student who's wondering, um, when do you find out about your Cal Grant status once your FAFSA has been officially submitted? Okay, it depends on when it is. The ones who are doing it earlier, like now, are hearing sooner. But you're, there's two ways you can do it. One, you'll get a letter from them saying, congratulations, you qualify for the Cal Grant. Maybe you're like, I don't want to wait that long, or maybe the letter won't get here, or something like that. Um, also, it's good to check because sometimes you don't match up. Maybe the school address that they have in your school is not the one you used on the FAFSA. It was an old one or something. And there is a way for the schools to repair that and fix that match because that's what I'll be doing for the next few months. Um, but what you can do is you can go to the Cal Grant website and you can log in, create an account and see if it can find you. If it can find you, that means it's gotten your information and it'll tell you what you're eligible for. If it says that you know nothing is in our database, it means that it hasn't matched up. Either you look too early or maybe there's a problem. And if there's a problem, then you can ask the counselor at your school who works with the Cal Grant. And I don't know who that is. Some schools have a college counselor like me, specifically that's their job. Or at other schools, it's your academic counselor who kind of takes care of everything. And so there's one for each group of students. Or if it's a smaller school, it's one person period. Um, but they can help you find out what happened. You can just show them the message that you're, you're having. I don't have the exact address for the Cal Grant accounts, but if you if you Google Cal Grants, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, it's searched very, very often. And yeah, you create an account. You'll need your social security number to do that because that's how it's going to match um, to find your FAFSA. Okay, so I'm gonna ask one more logistical question before we move into um, showing your best self. So logistically, um, Clarissa has asked us, what is the average turnaround for scholarships? I have applied to 28 scholarships. Oh, this is amazing. But she's only heard back from one person so far. Okay, well, again, many of these scholarships are run by nonprofit agencies that don't have uh, a great setup. You know, they may get together when they get together. So it could be one of two things. One, they haven't decided yet. Or two, and I hate this, but they don't let the people who didn't win know. They just kind of leave them hanging. Um, and again, it has a lot to do with the fact that these are not professional entities um, doing things. But many times you haven't heard because even after the due date, and especially now with COVID, they have to get together and they have to figure out how to review the applications. And while all of us working with schools, we're very used to, let's just get on a Zoom and do it. If you have an uh, organization like the Elks Club or the Masonic Lodges, sometimes the members on the scholarship committee are, um, let's just say they're, they're seniors who are not as familiar with computers. I know because I, I help my mother with these things and um, they don't know how to do the Zoom thing to get together. So they're trying to figure out how to do things by mail. So it, um, or by phone. So it, it might be that. But what you could do um, is write a very polite email to the agency and just ask them, have decisions been made yet on the so-and-so scholarship? Because I have been waiting to hear. You just, you know, you don't say it rudely, but um, hopefully they would respond to that request. But yeah, some of them after the deadline within a week, bam, you know, and then others, it kind of drags on for a bit. And then others, they made their decision and just never told all the other people that they had done it already. So yeah, it's the part of scholarships that we can't control. 
it's yeah i remember that process the, my recommendation would be be persistent 28 scholarships is such an amazing start and um yes just keep going doesn't hurt to ask right right and you know and if it is like if they did get an overwhelming number it's, it's just they just haven't handled it yet and so, by the way um i was just going to add one thing if you yeah. have any local organizations that you know of uh graduate chapters of sororities and fraternities um elks club the masons um order of eastern star any of these uh kind of civic self-help organizations kiwanis they always have scholarships so you could try to contact them um, personally because if they're not really computer savvy that just means they'll have even less applicants which means you have an even higher chance of winning so you know sometimes do a little off computer searching so for clarification about the cal grant which i think again i'm just going to keep saying it's such a great opportunity um if i'm a student with a decent gpa and i turn in my fafsa i am automatically applied to the cal grant but what do i have to do next do i just have to accept the grant if i receive it well, you need to make that account so you can uh, make sure that everything is, is worked out because in California, we have what's called the entitlement grant for high school students. What that means is you're entitled to it. You don't have to compete for it like other states. So the year you graduate from high school and the year afterwards, you are entitled to that grant if you qualify for it. Now, sometimes circumstances change. So let's say, you, by the way, you can have a, un, it's an unweighted 2.0 GPA and it's a weird GPA. Don't think you know your financial aid GPA, you don't. It is not your regular GPA, it's totally different. So you would need to ask your, your teacher what it is. It's a 10th and 11th grade. It counts every class you've ever had, except um, I think it doesn't include uh, ROTC or PE, but it has like everything else. Um, and if it's a 2.0 to 2.99, that's the Cal Grant B. If it's a 3.0 to a 3.99, and it doesn't matter what it is, it could be 3.0 or 3.99, it's the same money. And so if you're entitled to get that, you will get it automatically renewed for the four years. It's only for four years or eight semesters, um, as long as your finances didn't change to the point where you no longer qualify. And for the Cal Grant A, the 3.0 and above, it's a pretty generous um, income that you, you know, you can be over a hundred thousand and still qualify. And that's a full tuition award. So um, yeah, you go, go to the Cal Grant website and make an account and see if it finds you. But again, it needs a little time to process. Now here's another thing we didn't talk about. Uh, let's say, for example, you, you're, you're American or you're a permanent resident, so you're eligible to apply for the FAFSA, but your parents are undocumented. And so they can't do the FAFSA the same way where they use that electronic signature. They need to print a page and sign it and mail it in because they don't have a social. They may have a work permit, but they don't have a social. So undocumented or people who are still in process and don't have a social yet, or they have a social through DACA, your parents in this case. Um, and so mailing it in and then getting it ready, that's gonna hold everything up, which is why you need to do the FAFSA now. It could take up to six weeks for that signature to be processed, and then you can find yourself on the Cal Grant. Otherwise your, your FAFSA will just say it's never done like it's, it's in a holding pattern. And, and believe me, they have lost those signature pages. You can imagine how many they get. So if it's been weeks and weeks, you might wanna maybe print out another one and send it again. Now, if you wanna say, I wanna make sure they get, I'm gonna do registered mail. Just remember that if they have to sign for it, you're gonna make them mad and they're gonna stick it at the bottom of the pile. I had them tell me this. So, um, you send it where you fill out um, the certified 
mail, it costs like a dollar or something. And that way, when you have proof that it was mailed, and that is good enough to make sure that you made any deadlines or whatever. And um, they also have the tracking where they don't have to sign, but it will send you an email when it's delivered. And you keep that as proof that they have it. But yes, the signatures take a long time. And we didn't even talk about the DREAM Act. Um, if you're undocumented in this state, you're eligible not only for the Cal Grant, but other scholarships as well. So you need to go to the California DREAM Act. It's run by the same people. It's the Cal Grant website. It's just a different page. And fill that out. It is exactly like the FAFSA, same questions. But fortunately for you, you are able and your parent to sign electronically. They created their own system. I wish the FAFSA would do this. And um, you can get yours processed much faster. So do know that just because you don't have papers does not mean that you are not eligible, at least in California, for state funding. So I, we have so many questions, which I love and I think is awesome. Um, and I'm gonna take two and kind of tweak them together uh, because I think we can answer them in an effective way that way. So um, we had somebody ask, how can I make myself look like a good candidate for scholarships? And we had another student ask, um, do scholarships need letters of recommendation, I'm having trouble getting those from my teachers. Yikes. Um, not every scholarship asks for letter of recommendations, but a lot of them do. Um, so if you are, you know, a, a junior, um, you can start thinking about who you could ask now, um, or if you, you know, even if it's scholarships coming up for months. Um, so just know that that's difficult. I can't make your teachers write for you. However, you will note that there are some scholarships that it doesn't have to be a teacher. It could be um, your boss at your job. It could be your supervisor at a volunteer place where you work um, or volunteer, do service, community service of some sort. So it doesn't always have to be a teacher. Also, counselors write lots of these letters. Um, so it could be maybe that you're not giving them enough time. Uh, let them know that they can write a letter for scholarships without mentioning the name of it. And you can use that same letter again and again. Now, some people are touchy. They don't want you to see what they wrote. Um, so they may have to, in that case, directly upload it somewhere rather than you doing it. But if they're okay with creating a PDF that they've signed and sending it to you, you can use it over and over again, as long as it doesn't, it's not specific to one scholarship. And they're just talking about your great qualities and, and everything else. And, um, you know, that can be very handy to have. You could use that same letter for a year. Um, I, did I forget something? And I, I think that's actually a really great point about the other question of how do I show myself as the best candidate? If a scholarship is asking for a letter of recommendation, being very mindful about who you ask to provide that recommendation is a great way to show who you are. Um, and can you recommend any other tips on how to be show that you're a good candidate for a scholarship? Well, I'll, I'll say one of the pet peeves of as someone who's been on scholarship committees, when I see their essay or letter or even the way they filled it out, done so quickly that it's full of typos, that, that really irks me. And I'm sure that I am not completely unique. You don't wanna have typos. Have someone read it over. Don't do it an hour before it's due. This is very helpful because if, if you did it really quickly, you can probably tell. Um, unless it was one of those database ones where I got this already. Oh, by the way, if you're reusing scholarships, please check carefully because I'll get letters, um, I mean, essays from like for this scholarship that I'm helping them pick winners for. And it's it's talking about them applying for another scholarship because they forgot to word process that out of there. So be very no. precise. Please don't do that. Be very precise about how you're writing, making sure that you're not 
writing for one scholarship and turning it into another, showing all your good points. Maybe you don't have the highest GPA, but you volunteer a lot. You spend hours and hours on your athletic skills. I mean, market yourself. What is it that you have that you could sell in a sense to the scholarship committee that makes you a better person? Because I'll tell you, some of the most successful people in this country were not for winner students. Um, they were so invested in their other things. And there are people on scholarship committees who were like that too when they were in high school. And so they're, you know, people always like to give awards to people that remind them of themselves. So just know that you don't have to be a perfect student because by the way, the perfect student who never does anything but homework usually is not getting these awards because they have nothing to say. They do their homework and they watch TV and they never do anything else. It's like, are you in the world? And believe me, COVID has shut things down, but not everything. You would be shocked. There's a site called Volunteer Crowd. They're constantly looking for virtual volunteers for whatever, um, you know, and if you, even if you did stuff that's not like through an organization, let me tell you something, thinking about my mother, there are a lot of old people who don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do anything online. You could help them so much with the most basic things. So if you have, even if it was your own family members, if you're showing them how to do things, if you're setting up sites for them, these are activities that you can claim on a scholarship. I mean, if you spend every day, you've got to babysit your little brothers and sisters because your parents are working, that's an activity. So you need to talk about that and how you spend your time. Don't make them think that if you're not saying anything, it means that you're just like gaming 24 seven. Um, because yeah, people people like people who have a variety of interests. And, and honestly, sometimes they like them more than the people with the higher grades. So don't sell yourself short. I think that is such great advice in general. Um, and we didn't really get to talk a lot about essays for scholarship applications, but I do want to remind everyone that you can submit your essay to getschool.com to be reviewed for free. Sometimes this is especially helpful because one, you should always have someone read your pieces of writing for typos yes. and just always have a second set of eyes. But sometimes you may be talking about something that's very personal and you, you don't want your parents to read it. Um, or your counselors are really busy with lots of essays to read. So Get School is here uh, to provide free essay review at any time throughout the year. It can be a college essay, a scholarship essay, um, but it is completely free and you can submit as many as you'd like. Yeah, is that in the chat? The, um... It is, so Jackie okay. just threw that in the chat. Um, and. Um, and we also, um, I just, I know we're running out of time. I want to remind everyone as well, because there were so many questions and we could not get to them all because this is such a huge topic. You can always text us, the Get Schooled staff at 335577. Just say the word college. We're here to help you. We do not replace the most amazing Lindas of the world. I'm going to tell you that because there's nothing that can replace this woman that is presenting to you. She is a wealth of knowledge, but sometimes you have a question outside of school hours or your counselor is really busy. There's a lot of students at your school and Get Schooled is here to help you. So you can always text 3355 to 7, 3355-77. Um, for help with FAFSA, college applications, college essays, scholarships. And then we also have some great information on where to find scholarships and how to strengthen yourself through extracurriculars and volunteering. So please, please, please do not be afraid to ask. I promise you that lots of people have the same question and your college counselor, uh, Mrs. McGee and Get Schooled is here to help you. So I want to thank all of you so much for coming. Uh, I wanna thank our guest speaker because just literally full of great information. Uh, your students are very, very lucky. 
Um, and I am going to turn it over actually to Jackie, who you have yet to see, because we have two Visa gift card winners. Yes, congratulations to our two winners today, um, Yajin Chen and Mark Jasper Torres. You are today's $50 gift card winners. I will be in contact with each of you tomorrow so that we can get your gift card processed. So congratulations. Okay. And Wait, Linda, was that one of your students? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's what I thought. And that's so a, exciting. Yeah, he's a twin, so they need all the money they can get. And they got two going to college at the same time. <laughs> yes, I love it. Oh, yay, look, our winner's in the chat. Woohoo! So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And again, for more information, you can check out um, the website that was shared, which is in the chat and also head over to getschool.com. If you text us, um, we have text providers. So there's actual people on the other side of that text line that will respond to you. Again, 335-577, super quick, super easy. And don't be afraid to apply to scholarships. Be persistent and uh, keep going because this is uh, such a great opportunity. And I thank you so, so much for our guest speaker and her wealth of knowledge. Oh, this is fun. Anytime. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.